and welcome to the Excel Academy English Grammar Channel. Before we begin, don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons below so you can keep following me. I'm Jessie. Today, we're going to learn about a little piece of punctuation with a lot of history, the colon. <laughs> Stay tuned. This misunderstood piece of punctuation originated in the third century BCE in Hellenic Egypt, a period during which Alexander the Great, one of the most powerful generals in history and a Philhellene, was spreading Greek culture throughout the Mediterranean. During the Hellenic period, Greek culture reached its zenith, and you probably recognize a number of Greek achievements. The Hellenic Age saw the extraordinary Socratic revolution in thinking, begun by the philosopher Socrates, which still guides empirical and logical inquiry today. His greatest student, Plato, began the first institution of higher learning in the Western world, which he called the Academy. Kind of like us, right? <laughs> the Hellenic Greeks were also amazing architects, scholars, and artists giving us buildings such as the Parthenon, medical scholars such as Hippocrates, and artistic works such as the Atrical Tragedy. During the Hellenic Age, a man named Aristophanes used colon-like dots to break up what would otherwise be a long stream of writing with no end in sight. These dots were eventually simplified into what we see today, the colon. Now, let's learn about the rules governing a colon today, which are pretty different from the rules followed by the ancient Greeks. The best way to understand the colon's purpose is to remember one thing. It is meant to draw your attention to the information that follows it. The information will fill in the blanks left by the information preceding it. Now, do you wanna take a look at some examples? All right, first off, colons can be used to set off lists. Let's look. So Jane loves only three things, colon, friends, dogs, and pizza. I wanna be friends with Jane. <laughs> now be sure, grammarians, not to capitalize the first word in the list unless it's a proper noun, and never use a colon between a subject and its verb. This is an example of what not to do. Jane's three favorite things are, colon, Friends, dogs, and pizza. That's not right. <laughs> Second, colons can be used at the end of a sentence to draw the reader's attention to the next sentence. Let's take a look. The rumors are true, colon. The moon is made of green cheese. <laughs> Here, we want to capitalize the first word after the colon because the sentence following is an independent clause, which we've already learned about. Now finally, colons can be used to set off quotations. For example, though Shakespeare was quite the jokester, he often provided his readers the wisest of observations. A quote by him is as follows. And this our life, exempt from public haunt, finds tongues in trees, books in the running brooks, sermons in stones, and good in everything. Well, that's it for today. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons below. Until next time, grammarians.